Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead. We are, we are praying. Our Heavenly Father, we want to bless you and thank you this morning. We thank you for the lives of each one of us here. We thank you for the breath. Thank you for the opportunity that you have granted us to gather here this moment. Father, we pray, commit our session into your hands, O oh God. Holy Spirit, come and lead us. Come and, come and take absolute control. Direct us. Open our understanding and our minds in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, commit our pastor into your care. We pray that you grant her the utterances. Father, to make clear utterances to us that we will understand. And in the end, we will give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elisha. So, uh, once again, just quickly starting off with uh, uh, a note on the assignments. Um, those of us who have submitted, don't worry too much about it. Like, if you have submitted, then there is a private um, comment which you can send to me. Uh, after your submission, you'll see that it's a private thing. So, you can check if you would like to. But otherwise, if you've hit the submit button, I generally get it. So, I know this is your first semester. So, you're all worried whether your assignments have reached me or not. Uh, but uh, yeah, don't worry too much about it. Okay. So, uh, success, uh, you have a question? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, house. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, success. I'm lacking behind. I'm behind. If not okay. for the WhatsApp group opened, I wouldn't have known that you have program today. I was I have not received notification that you have a, a prayer today, prayer lecture. Uh huh. Uh, so when did you when did you register success for the course? I, I registered about uh, it's not too much this year. This year I registered this year. This year. Okay, and yes. is this your first class which you are attending? Uh, uh, I can check the dates. I can check the dates. I'll be attending a when is this lecture, but not on Friday. Oh, oh! So you've missed out on the Friday lectures. Yes, I've not attended any of Friday lectures. It's only today is my first day of Friday lecture. I'll be attending when is the lectures all the time. Okay, so um, if you have signed up for prayer and intercession, there's nothing to worry because this semester we've started recording all our sessions uh, just okay. on the Google Classroom. If you go on to the stream page there, you will see the videos posted. I think, I don't know the number of today's video, maybe this is the 20th video, but um, for catching up, you will have to go over, you know, go through all the previous videos. Okay, so you, yes, you I'll will... be uh, through the website. Through the website, I'll be checking the video and I'll be going through the videos. Okay, yeah, then that will help uh, success because you won't miss anything. You you will get all the uh, points of discussion. Okay, all right then. Yeah. Okay, so I just want to alert you. The first assignment is already posted, and it is due uh, in a in a couple of weeks. So please have a look at it. Okay. Note the date. You would need to go over the videos and go through your notes before you know the end of uh, uh, the due date because you have to finish your assignment also. Yes, I, I saw the assignment is going to uh, due date is on twenty second of October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have sufficient uh, so time. I, I, to I, catch I, up. Yeah, I've catch up. No, I will. I will definitely. I will catch up. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, thank you. Thank up. you for bringing thank it to so our notice. Thank you so much. No problem. All the best. Amen. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, Lubega Collins. I have not seen the assignments yet. Oh, okay. Lubega, how can I help you? Oh, you have it. Great. Okay, Lubega has it. That's fine. Uh, Sitkenu. Okay, so he's uh, just suggesting something to success. You can uh, get the Google Classroom app on your phone and that also might help. Okay, wonderful. All right, so we've discussed 
about the assignments let's get into the class uh, in the last class we were talking about uh, praying for the lost and we said that it involves both prayer as well as spiritual warfare and we were looking at you know the ways in which we can pray for someone who is away from the lord and we said we will invite the holy spirit to come and work because he is the one who does the work of conviction in the hearts of the people then we said that we can pray to the father uh, and ask that the father will draw people to himself then we also said that we can pray and ask god to bring about repentance in the heart of the individual okay so they far away from god they caught up in certain uh, lives uh, in a certain lifestyle and habits that don't glorify god then we can ask god god give them a heart of repentance that they leave those things and come back to you and we can also ask god that you know, they will have the knowledge of the truth you know what the reality uh, really is about god and uh, living a sinless life before god so uh in addition to this we can pray that god will give them wisdom and revelation so that their spiritual eyes will be opened up and they will be ready to receive what he is doing and what he is saying to them then we said that we can pray and uh, ask god for uh divine connections for laborers to be sent out to need them in their own circumstance and situation and uh, you know uh, they can sow the seed of god's word into the lives of uh, these loved ones and uh, you know they may respond to uh, what god is speaking to their hearts at that point and then we touched upon how god ministers through dreams visions he can also send angels okay uh, to to uh, awaken people to himself and the, these are all ways in which he does it and we too can uh, pray in line with with all these things uh, and uh, yeah so that's what we were at uh, some of us shared uh, you know some testimonies and things like that so that was good i'm just coming back to the chat here sorry for the interruption uh, lubega okay through google classroom but this time around i didn't get the assignments okay okay all right uh, would uh, somebody be able to clarify lubega's uh, question like answer yeah, his question uh, here may... please yes sir please yeah so uh, brother lubega so officially Uh, the assessment assignment which we have received is one for holy spirit and another one for prayer and intercession and uh, as from your message you have completed both of them so you are not missing out on anything else ministry ministry found ministers foundation and old testament survey was uh, uh, not the assessment uh, part of assignments it was this part of the course work um, so these two are the ones which would be assessed so you have not missed on anything else thank you uh is that helpful lupega anything more to clarify okay sure i think that is uh, quite clear now so we'll carry on uh, so we uh, just said that okay we can pray in various ways for people to come to know him even supernatural ways okay and um, the next section that we are going to look at today is uh, how we exercise our spiritual authority um, uh to open prison doors and you know we we also said that satan likes to keep these people in prison so we can declare the finished work of the cross okay um over the lives of these people now we know that through the finished work of the cross satan has been defeated and uh, the powers of darkness no longer have a hold on our lives so through that authority you know we can begin to speak 
we can begin to declare over the lives of those who are lost now if there are certain prison doors okay prison meaning uh we know that satan has kept them in bondage of some sort so it could be an addiction right maybe we are praying for a uh, uh, a region or maybe we are praying for our city and we know that in a, in a particular area there are people who are engaging in alcoholism okay so that is that is an addiction which the people have and we know that satan has kept them in bondage in that particular area so while we pray for them uh, we can declare there is freedom through the work of the cross what the lord jesus has done that there is freedom we declare that freedom over the lives of those individuals uh, we we speak you know the the liberty of god be set free in jesus name so through the finished work of the cross we have god's power which has already been released so basically what we're doing is in spiritual warfare we are applying that and we can we can command it we can decree it we can declare it we could even you know uh, uh, issue commands like come forth come out of that bondage or you know come out of that uh, uh, addiction in the name of jesus so we can pray in this manner to uh, see people released from darkness and brought into light then more specifically right we can identify the patterns there can be uh, things happening in people's lives uh, you know which are demonically influenced as we pray as we pray god can show us okay they are bound by a spirit of uh, deception they are bound by a spirit of uh, lust or they are bound by a spirit of bitterness they are bound by a spirit of uh, strife right so something god reveals that to us and when we are engaging in spiritual warfare we are specifically going after that stronghold and god's word you know teaches us that we are here to bring down every thought you know tear down uh, every e- everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of god so these strongholds uh, these demonic influences over people's hearts and lives you know, we can we can pray against them we can tear them down remember we we talked about exercising our authority so uh while doing that we bind we loose we cast out so we're engaging our authority by praying over the people and praying very specifically over those uh those those uh, you know demonic influences over their lives and you know as we're doing that we can expect you know all these things to break and uh, their hearts to be in a place where they can receive what god is doing so the second thing that we would do first is we would declare the finished work of the cross over the lives of the people second is we can go specifically after the demonic influence okay whatever that that's that is we can go after that then we can uh, you know destroy the works of the spirits that are at work in people now uh, ephesians chapter 2 it shows us that the the influence okay of the demonic realm it is working in the people of the world now as believers we have the authority to destroy that okay we we will pray against so once again this is kind of uh, in sync with the earlier point that we said we will identify specific influences and pray against it here in point 3 it's more like you know the the demonic realm uh, we we will pray against those spirits that are holding people captive so it just some pointers actually but there are many ways in which we can engage in spiritual warfare for those who are lost and as we begin to pray what really is happening is uh you know whatever is holding them back that is being destroyed and at the same time you know our prayers over their lives where we are saying okay god bless them god awaken them to your truth uh god uh 
uh, you know let them let them have a spirit let their spiritual eyes be open so god's word is at work god's presence is at work in their lives and whatever is holding them back from the demonic realm you know those things are being crushed and destroyed so uh, the lost are in the better place to uh, to to accept salvation and become children of god so these are all uh, th these are the ways in which we can pray for those who are uh, away from god now while doing these things you know whenever we talk about spiritual warfare there is a danger of believers becoming overly conscious about the demonic realm right so that is something we must avoid now how do we engage the demonic realm yes you know we go against it we fight against it but if you look at uh, the passage wait let me pull that out for you there is a scripture yeah the reference is james 4 verse 7 okay excuse me James four verse seven, um, very familiar for many of us. It simply says, "Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you." So, in spiritual warfare, our focus ends up in resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But notice this verse; it actually begins with "submit to God." yeah submit yourself then to god so what is the key to spiritual warfare yes resist engage in spiritual warfare but before you do that even before you do that submit yourself to god so as much as we are submitted to god you know we have god's authority flowing through us against the enemy so the requirement is that we position ourselves uh, in obedience position ourselves in the truth of god's word to such an extent right to uh, or or rather that becomes the priority and once we have done that then we resist the devil and he will flee from us so even when we pray for those who are lost we are engaging in spiritual warfare we must not forget that we should not become demon conscious or devil conscious okay otherwise what happens every time we are so busy we are tearing down strongholds we are rebuking uh, you know this uh, demon and that stronghold and you know pulling down something but we forget that our position of worshiping the lord you know uh, that has to be the main thing so you worship god you exalt god you give time to god's word uh, live in obedience to god's word and from that place engage in spiritual warfare and that will be that will make for very effective spiritual warfare so while we uh, pray for those who are lost you know let's not become overly concerned about what the devil is doing then the next thing here because again you know these are all the pitfalls of spiritual warfare people become overly conscious i talked about you know influences right as, as a de the devil uh, can hold people as prisoners uh, in in addictions and you know certain influences so to pray and we, we are going to look at this later on in our course actually there is a a, a pattern uh which is used for prayer it's called a spiritual mapping a lot of people use that to identify what influences are there over a region so they'll identify they'll say okay there's a lot of violence uh, in in this particular region or there is alcohol addiction or there is uh corruption that there, there is uh, um uh unfaithfulness in marriage so they'll identify certain uh demonic influences over regions and when people come together for prayer what they'll do is they'll specifically pray against that now 
it has also happened that people get very caught up in this right so they they are only concerned about oh okay this place uh, what are the demonic strongholds here which is the temple which is over here in this place which is the goddess ha huh, okay this goddess will influence in this way so again it's an unhealthy interest in spiritual mapping whether it is what satan is doing the demons are doing or you know uh, spiritual mapping the only warning whenever we are engaging in spiritual warfare is don't become demon conscious because that's not the point at all we are already in a place of authority and in the last class i talked about what jesus has done right how he has destroyed the devil disarmed the devil uh, he has made a public spectacle of the enemy so we are already winners and we have to fight from a place of victory and yes by the way we are resisting the devil and doing all those things uh, but that's not our focus when we talk about spiritual warfare so for those who are lost we can pray for them and we can also engage in spiritual warfare and always remember that you know god is a god who sets people free god is a god who is a redeemer he is a restorer you know who are we to say uh what god can do in someone's life and one of you uh was it in this class or another class we talked about apostle paul how a a, a murderer became an apostle and god is able to do that you know in the lives of his people so he can set free prisoners and he can cause them to to rule and reign in the uh, in the experience of uh, caleb there is a short note uh, in our uh, book here basically it talks about a place called kirjat arba okay uh, which was a stronghold of giants so uh, anakim giants they lived there however you know uh, caleb asked for a mountain to be given to him and you know the the mountain was given to him but you know later on later on uh, once he took over it became a place of refuge it became a place where where those who were guilty right they would be sent over to that place uh, and uh, you know they they would stay there and kind of you know their lives will be protected their lives will be preserved so we are talking about this in the in the context that this is what god does in the lives of sinners you know we might look at sinners and say uh, you are only worthy for punishment you are worthy for the consequences of what you have done and nothing good can happen in your life but you know we see that god is a god who can turn around a stronghold of giants into a place of refuge okay and can he not do that today as we pray as we lift up people if you recall uh we talked about uh, the son of billy graham when we prayed uh, when we talked about praying for for families so god turned his life around right franklin graham and how uh, he is today one of the uh, christian leaders you know, who we look up to so god can change lives god can bring back the lost uh, and even if we are talking in terms of regions and communities of people and wondering how can this community or how can this set of people ever come to know god how can they even serve god you know uh, they have a very sinful lifestyle god is able god is uh, he is is strong enough right to to do that work in their lives and we already know that the cross is the finished work he has already completed the work and the cleansing comes from there and any community any individual can be saved but we must continue to engage in prayer continue to keep praying for the people who are lost so uh, at this point i'm just going to pause to leave this time open for us to share okay so if you have uh, a testimony where a loved one who was away from god and please keep it brief uh, maybe within 
30 I don't know, maybe a minute, a maximum of a minute, if you would like to share of how you prayed and you saw a loved one come back to God, you could do that now. Anyone, just feel comfortable. If you don't mind sharing the testimony, then yes, you know, you can uh, share it with the class here. Okay, uh, no one has a testimony? Uh, then can okay, I not a problem. Maybe, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, Sally Tolly, go ahead. Okay, um, you know, like, uh, I just want to share a short testimony of how my, uh, God delivered my dad from the bondage of alcohol. He was an alcoholic for more than 35 years. And it was very tough growing up. And I, uh, we used to pray for him, you know, all the time. And, you know, uh, God really worked and God really answered the prayers. And by the grace of God, now he's totally free from alcohol. And also there was a time when, like, uh, God saved him from their dead experience. Uh, he had a stroke for two times, but God supernaturally, you know, healed him and delivered him. And we're so thankful to God for delivering him and saving him. Thank God and praise God for that. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Zulitoli, for, for sharing that from your life. Uh, and if I may ask uh, you, how did you pray for your father all those years when you were trusting God for his salvation and for his deliverance? Would you, uh, are you able to recall? How did you pray for him? Yes, uh, ma'am, like uh, we used to come against the spirit of alcoholism and every spiritual blindness which is blinding his eyes. You know, we used to pray that God will open his eyes of understanding so that he can see things in the spirit and he will repent and come back to Jesus. Wow, okay. So thank you. Thank you again for sharing that. So we see that, you know, you were praying for him, but at the same time, there, there's also that spiritual warfare aspect, right? That spirit of alcohol. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Silatoli. That's very, very helpful. Okay. And uh, Rebecca uh, has put on a comment here. She says, uh, Mark 9, 18, we see in that place, one boy was in bondage with mute demonic spirit. His father takes him to disciple, but they are unable to cast out that demon, uh, demonic boy. Okay. So uh, after that, uh, isn't that the place where Jesus says, this kind shall not... Okay, let me get that verse for you first, Rebecca. One second. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so verse 28, Rebecca, uh, of that same passage, um, after Jesus rebukes the spirit, he casts out the, the deaf and mute spirit from that boy, we see here, 
He says, uh, 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 okay, I'll read the verse, verse 28. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. And uh, we have, you know, the some of the other gospels, they say that um, Jesus said, this kind will only come out through prayer and fasting. So, uh, the conclusion, the conclusion that we draw is see whenever we we move in the uh, the works of God, whenever we move in the supernatural, you know what is needed for that? Faith. We need faith. Without faith, we cannot engage. In this case, it was the casting out of a demon. So what Jesus was saying is he was saying that looks like. The disciples did not have the faith that was required for the casting out of the demons. So that's why he tells them this kind will not come out except through prayer and fasting. What do prayer and fasting do for us? Prayer and fasting are helpful in strengthening our faith. Okay, so the answer to your question is why were the disciples not able to cast the demon out? It was a faith issue. And so Jesus gave them the solution also. He said, okay, come on, you know, pray more, uh, get into fasting, because that will develop your faith and you will be in a position where you will be able to cast out demons. So does that answer your question? Okay. We'll uh, give Ripika some time. In the meantime, I will read Sitkenu's comment here. He says, Ma'am, when we are praying for a person who has a demon possession, then when there is a counter attack, the person who is praying for that per person with possession, uh, please can you tell me any scripture or any way to fight? Okay, just a moment, Sitkenu. Let me get something for you. Okay, so Luke ten nineteen is a good scripture which you can meditate on. So this is when Jesus sends um, uh, 72 people to go and do the work of the ministry. Okay, so they go, they cast out demons and all that. And you see, he tells them, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. If you read some other translations, it says, nothing by any means shall harm you. And he told this before he went to the cross. So you can imagine, after he destroyed the devil, how much authority we have. Isn't it, Sitkenu? So, yeah. So this is one scripture you can hold on to. Another scripture I'll give you. Yeah, this is uh, one. Okay, one John five eighteen. Okay, this one says. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. And the one who was born of God keeps them safe and the evil one cannot harm them. And some other translations say the evil one cannot touch them. Okay. And of course, you know, there is Psalm 91, which you could uh, declare. Uh, so, you know, what happens, uh, Sitkenu? I am not sure from where we get this understanding that Satan is 
powerful and if we go against him he will retaliate now it is a given fact that satan will whether we like it or not he will attack every human being whether you are a believer or you are not a believer because he is against the creation of god now when we are believers okay and we are committed believers we want to grow in the lord all the more he will like, he would want to disturb us yes or no yeah he will isn't it so he will go about doing this by default now whether i cast out a demon or i don't cast out a demon satan is interested in disturbing me in one way or the other so the point is we should not make it a big deal in our minds when we make it a big deal in our minds that's when it starts affecting us because i remember this was the uh, maybe one of the first uh, times when i cast out a demon and then i was so scared i i came back home and i thought what's going to happen now now that i have uh, been able to cast out this demon will it, will it attack my family and because i was so concerned about it there were a couple of things that happened at home uh, which made me feel like there is a backlash or there is a retaliation but actually scripturally if you look at it uh when jesus is sending the 72 he is saying you know what nothing of the enemy nothing by any means shall harm you so even in jesus is concept it's like don't bother don't worry about any retaliation whether you cast out a demon or you didn't cast out a demon will satan try to trouble you he will okay so that's it so don't don't be overly um conscious of a retaliation that's when you know whatever we believe it starts happening to us so it's it's all over here in in the mind we are giving priority to this thing of satan will uh, retaliate he will attack me back and all but there there is no such thing we already have god's protection in so many uh, scriptures he has told us that satan cannot touch us nothing by any means shall harm us so we we dwell in god's presence and we are protected so just claim all these things and keep doing the works of god because mark 16 right mark 16 let me post that scripture also for you yeah uh 16 verses 17 and 18 so this is talking about the normal normal lifestyle of a believer lifestyle okay all of us so what will we do these signs will accompany those who believe if you believe these signs will accompany you in my name they will drive out demons it's normal so we don't have to keep worrying okay they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and you know they will drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on sick people and they will get well so these things are supposed to happen through the life of every believer uh, and uh, so we just go about doing these things and not worrying uh, as to how satan is going to react or respond to us yeah so does does that help uh, in some way sitkinu yes ma'am it helped me in very much thank you ma'am okay that's great yeah process. good to know yeah praise god wonderful yes uh, uh any anything else uh about this matter about praying for a loved one praying for the lost spiritual warfare okay so i just want to encourage you in that case uh to keep praying for those who are lost uh in uh, you know in your circle 
in your life in your family uh, which is very very important but at the same time you no know, we will go on in fact the uh, the next few sections are about praying for the city praying for um, regions uh, so when when we do that you know we can use this in the larger context and begin to pray for for communities of people you know to come to know god and uh, uh, you know there are again stories when you when you read about the revivals in in christian history you will see that when people prayed like this i am not uh, okay it's called the layman's revival okay layman's revival you you can look it up uh, in that revival you no know, they they uh, just they just began praying they just began praying during the lunch breaks and as they started praying you know god's presence took over in such a marvelous way that uh, one of the the results of of people engaging in prayer was that even without saying a word people were giving their lives to christ so i don't know the number but you know hundreds and thousands of people gave their lives to to christ through that movement the layman's revival so you can look it up but as we engage in prayer not just one person being saved you know here and there uh, that that's not the only thing we are looking for but god can can bring in right a uh, mighty harvest of souls and we can engage both in prayer and spiritual warfare for the lost population okay so just want to encourage us uh, maybe so far you've never thought about it you've never had a burden for for praying for the lost right in our city or in a nation and all but uh, ask god to burden uh, our hearts and as we start focusing on that you know we will surely as we invest in prayer as we engage in spiritual warfare we will see a turning around we will see souls saved and souls coming into the kingdom of god yeah uh, divya you have you have something to ask yes yes pastor uh, thank you uh, so my yeah. question is regarding uh, uh, what about those people who are brought up in a christian background but would have had you know some tragedies in life and they turned away from faith like or even earlier on it was not a, like a personal relationship but just in a christian background they are brought up uh, so uh, and if if they just become like atheists right just thinking oh um, in our dire need uh, or life situation i did not receive help from god so um, they are just thinking like oh there is no god so to such people right how uh, what how can we you know evangelize them or how can we brought in even the topic of god <laughs> yeah yeah thank you yeah yeah thank you uh, divya that's a really good question um see one thing we have to always bear in mind okay uh, that there are only two categories one is those who are born again and those who are not born again see john chapter 3 and verse 3 right that's what jesus said I'm posting it here in our chats um yeah jesus replied Uh, verily verily i tell you no one can see the kingdom of god unless they are born again so there's only two category those who are born again those who are not born again now they can be from a christian background but you know as they say uh, my one of my youth leaders she used to uh, put it this way she's like uh, um if if you are um, uh born in mcdonalds uh you can't become a burger okay if you're born uh, in in the whatever in some showroom ferrari showroom it doesn't make you a ferrari so it's like you can be born in a christian household but it cannot make you it cannot make you a christian unless what jesus said you must be born again so uh, even if someone's coming from a christian background we we're just looking at two categories here believer unbeliever that person is a unbeliever and like uh, you know others who have not yet come to that place of decision uh, they we will continue to pray for them now yes you know whatever we said right divya like through life experiences 
uh, and uh, um, the trauma you specifically mentioned trauma they've gone through some trauma in their life uh, and they have a mindset a pattern of thinking so we'll really have to engage in spiritual warfare for that person so you know by as the holy spirit leads you you have to tear down like you have to pull down those strongholds you have to do the the work of uh, binding losing declaring god's word over that person but these are all the the spiritual uh, activities that you will engage in but when it comes to ministering to that individual this is what i would say i would say just be a reflection of god in their lives which means to show the love of god okay to them so if they can see god's love through you i'm sure that you know they will be on the path to salvation a lot quicker and, and that's where i think where believers kind of uh, uh, struggle you see we know to pray we know to do spiritual warfare but when it comes to interacting with the unsaved person we judge them we condemn them we put them down you know we show them our anger and our displeasure all these things totally put them off they're like okay if this is how jesus is why would i need jesus you know they come to that place so basically love on them pray for them but uh, be that example of the love of god over their lives so that's what i would like to say yeah thank you that's a beautiful answer thank you thank you Pastor. yeah yeah no problem do yeah no problem yeah and uh, i i do know that um, having done all this sometimes quickly we see people coming to christ but i still have loved ones right i told you i, I am praying for some of my relatives uh, and it, it it is a prayer of uh, persistence where we keep trusting keep declaring keep loving on them till they come to that point of decision okay yeah so right and the, yeah i see ribika's comment also here uh, she says a believer needs strong faith prayer and fasting and holiness to cast out the demon spirit well uh, prayer and fasting help with faith ribika so what does a believer need to cast out a demon spirit to believe these signs shall follow those who believe so if you have faith we can cast out yeah so all right good i think that's good um, we've uh, got some uh, you know handle on on things uh, of spiritual warfare that's helpful because we will talk little more about spiritual warfare later as well we touched on some of those points so it's 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 not a digression of any sort uh, so let's pray and close uh, we will come to the section on praying for the cities in the next class okay next week we will take that up so would like to request uh, somebody to please pray how about success success uh, since you've joined us this friday could you please pray as we close the class all right thank you so yeah, much thank you. thank you yeah father we want to say thank you the king of kings and the lord of hosts we want to say thank you thank you for all you have been doing for us thank you for the past Thank you for the present and thank you for the future. Thank you for our teacher. Thank you for our lecture. For participating in this course. Father, we say thank you. We receive all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And my Father, my God, I pray that, oh God, give us the grace to meet up with your standard in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, oh Lord, as we are going, all what you have learned today, May we put it in the practice in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Father. We pray for our lecturer, our teacher, the management. Almighty God, you will increase them with your strength in the name of Jesus Christ. And thereby close the class of today in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Success. Amen. for graciously Thank leading us in prayer
god bless you and god bless each one of you have a great weekend everyone yeah thank you thank you everybody thank you nikki also for that comment thank you everyone god bless you yeah take care all right yeah okay bye